there used to be an awning up there. But uh... I've got a full video about Instagram. Oh, shice! No! No? The awning is down there for some reason. I can't wait to see our video. Getting an RV is kind of a big deal. You're towing or driving a freaking house and you're gonna mess some stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you mess up some big things. Guess how many? of these 10 top dumbest things that RVers do that Leela and I have done. I think Tiny Human's gonna help me. Are you gonna help me? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take your RV to the ground for the next one. Because that's one that's cost us the most money. Uh, Guess how much money it cost me? Five. Number one. This one's cost us the second largest amount of money to fix, and that is not putting the awning in when it's windy. I know there's some of you guys that have those fancy wind detector automatic ones. Those don't always work. If it's windy, if it's gonna be windy if you're leaving, you always don't put your awning in. No! Number two. This one seems obvious, but it's easily overlooked. Not, not maintaining your RV. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be maintained, like your slides, your roof. You gotta go in the roof every three to six months or have somebody go up there if you're afraid and make sure nothing's leaking. These hoses need to be checked. Window seals, like right there, they need to be checked and lubricated. Hydraulic fluid, you gotta make sure that's full. You should really look under the RV once in a while to make sure stuff isn't cutting up underneath there because stuff can get jacked. Would you look under there to make sure nothing's broken under there for me, please? Have a look. Right there. Oh no, something's broken. See, she found something already. Number, number three. Not booking your site in advance or not knowing where you're going to stop. We were recently in Canada and we had to drive around for like three hours just to find a place to pull over. And the number of times we haven't booked a site in advance and we're like wondering what we're gonna do at nine o'clock at night, well, yeah, way, way, way too many times. Number four. Tiny Human's my cinematographer. Over here, Tiny Human, up here, up here not carrying tools or being willing to do it yourself. You gotta, come on over, tiny human. Show them what's inside here, pointing there. See, we got, a, we, got, we got a bunch of tools mm -hmm. and I use them all the time. Thank you very much. Nice job. When you have an RV, stuff is going to break all the time. And if you're living in it full time, like we were at one point, you really need to know how to fix things yourself. Learn to fix it, dude. Because, the repair shops and dealerships that are not always gonna be able to accommodate you. And when it's your house, you know, you're, you can't just like drop it off for three weeks at a time. So take the time, spend a little bit of money to get some basic tools and learn how to fix some stuff yourself. Google's an amazing place. Number five. Not having a checklist or at least a procedure you follow every time you disconnect or connect because you're gonna forget things. For example, this one time I was disconnecting the fifth wheel from the truck and I had the tailgate up and this resulted and it's still wonky and it's gonna cost 1500 bucks to fix. Your procedure should include things like the order you hook things up and connect things and turn things on and making sure there's enough clearance for your slides. Please subscribe. Go through the whole process, write it all down, create a checklist so you follow the same thing every time. The same goes when you are taking off and connecting. One time, I started pulling forward, I thought it was connected, and the RV started to slide off of the fifth wheel hitch like I had like that much space. If I'd gone another three inches, it would have crushed my entire truck. Why? So yeah, Why? I've made that mistake. Uh -huh. Why? Yeah. Because I messed up, because I didn't have a checklist. That's why. Oh, number six. Leaving the black tank open. When we first got the RV, we got one of those Y connectors. You could hook up the gray tank and the black tank to the septic. If you leave the black tank open, then the solids pile up inside the tank and it gets clogged really easily. You wanna leave it closed and leave at least a little water in it before you start using it to avoid any issues. That's another maintenance thing, by the way. You need to clean out your black tank and your toilet. You can get a little swish for that. We actually have a whole video on that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Number seven, don't be in a rush. Translation, don't be in a rush for any of it. Set up, take down, driving. When you're in a rush, towing something this big and this expensive, you're bound to have issues. And one of the most common things that people do is like, they'll be like, I'm not gonna stop to go to the bathroom or to eat, we're just gonna plow through four hours. So you get to the RV site, you're tired, you're hungry, and you have to pee really bad. One of you's driving and one of you's spotting, and you're in such a rush, you're angry with each other, and you, you know, you, 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 have, you have problems. Or you're jamming down the road at 80 miles an hour and a tire blows out, like, it's not worth it. Don't, don't be in a rush, man. Number eight. 
not being ready for cold weather. That totally happened to us We're in Colorado. We did not have a heated hose like this one here. That's why I'm standing like this right now. We had pipes that froze inside here and the propane either stopped working or we ran out. So we were freezing cold with no heat and no water. That, that was a pain. And I didn't know how to fix things very well back then. So we had to like take it to a guy and it, it was nice, but it, it, it took a long time. If you're not ready for cold weather, you're, you're gonna have issues. I'm not even talking about prepping your RV to store it for winter. That's an entirely different subject. I'm talking about being ready if you are traveling to cold weather. So make sure you do your research on that so you don't get hosed like we were. Number nine. Which is not monitoring and not checking your tires. Number nine. You should probably check the tread on your tires. <laughs> Take 27 with hyper <laughs> three-year-old. <laughs> you should probably check the tread and tire pressure on your tires before you leave on a trip and you should monitor them with a tire pressure monitoring system while you're driving always because if one tire blows out and you got four, they could all blow out. The additional pressure could blow them all out. It's very dangerous. Here's the tire pressure monitoring system we use. There's a link for it in the description below. Not having a spotter when you're backing up or maybe having too many distractions when you're backing up. It can cause issues. There's one time, okay, I did have a spotter, but... Trump? Okay. No, you're fine, Trev. You're gonna have to back it up. You need to come look. Trev, Trev. There you go. And uh, whose fault was that? I mean, I guess it was mine. I was the one pressing the gas pedal, but that was expensive. Here's how many of those top 10 mistakes we've made. How many have you made? Post that in the comments below and click right here to see how to clean out your septic.